Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be doing a full ombre powder procedure. So if you are an artist hoping to learn a little bit more or someone who is considering having this procedure done, this will be a great video for you, so stay tuned. So the first thing we are doing here is wiping down her brows with alcohol and making sure that we are working on a sterile surface. Once you have wiped down the brows, we are now going to proceed with brow mapping. So brow mapping is going to help the artist to create symmetry between the brows. It's also going to allow the client to see what their brows are essentially going to look like before we start the procedure. It's going to help them determine the size and the shape. So as you can see here, I'm just taking my time drawing those lines. These are going to be my base points and they will help me to then fill in her brows and create a symmetrical shape. If you would like an in-depth video on just brow mapping, please comment down below and I would be happy to upload something that focuses more just on this area of the procedure. Now, using my brow pencil, I'm going to go in and fill in her brows using those base points to guide me and also just staying with her natural brow shape. I always like to work within the client's natural brow shape. I'm trying to enhance what they already have. I'm not trying to create something totally different. That way, we're going to have the most natural result possible. If you were to have a client that doesn't have any hair at all, then you have a little bit more flexibility in creating any type of shape that the client would want. And of course, just using your expertise to determine a shape that would best suit that client's face. And just a reminder, when filling in your client's brows, you always want to make sure that your pencil is sharpened. That way you're going to get the cleanest lines and you're not going to need to clean up too much afterwards. If your pencil gets dull at any point, feel free to just take a moment and resharpen it before starting your pre-draw again. Once I'm done filling in the brow, I am now going to go in with some makeup remover on a fine tip cotton round. I'm just cleaning up the edges here and I'm going to make any adjustments that are necessary to the brow shape. Next, I like to go in and remove any hair that is not inside of the brow shape. I know a lot of artists like to use a razor and shave those hairs. I personally like to pluck out the thick ones and then I'll go in with the razor and fine tune and kind of just get rid of any little peach fuzz that's left behind. With plucking, you just want to make sure that you are pulling the hairs in the same direction they are growing and don't forget to stretch the skin. So now as you can see here, I'm just going in with the razor, shaving off any little fine hairs that might have been left over. We are not getting rid of any of the hair that's inside of the shape because we want to keep as much hair as possible so that the client can have the most natural look. If you are going to use a razor, just make sure you're stretching your client's skin so you're not nicking them or creating any irritation. Now, before we proceed any further, I'm going to show this client what this one brow looks like. I do this so that the client has a chance to provide feedback on this one brow before we go ahead and start filling in the next one. Doing this will save you a lot of time because now you can make adjustments based on the client's preference and correct that brow before moving on instead of drawing two brows that the client does not like. All right, so as you saw, we did discuss the brow shape and she gave me her approval. So now I am okay to proceed to the next side. So here I'm just doing the same thing that I did on the first brow. I'm just filling it in and using my base points to guide me. Sorry guys, I went ahead and sped this part up because you already saw it with the first brow. And I am not here to waste your time. Time is money. As I said earlier, you always want to be working with a sharp pencil. So if it does dull out during the procedure, feel free to take the time to resharpen it. So again, I'm just repeating the same thing that I did on the first brow. I'm cleaning up those hairs and as you can see here, those brows are starting to come to life. And cleaning up the brows like this is so important because you want to get rid of that hair before you conceal, otherwise it's going to be really messy. So now that your brows are just about perfect, you can now move on to the concealing portion of the procedure. I personally like to lay the client down for this part. I just find it's easier for me to stretch the skin and steady my hand this way. Concealing the brows is super important. You never ever want to skip this step. Concealing is going to give you a really crisp shape. It's going to help you clean up your lines and it's going to allow you to see exactly where your outline should go. 
A question I get asked a lot by my students is what concealer shade to use. You want to go for the lightest shade possible because you're trying to create a contrast between the two colors so that you can see where you need to outline. This is not makeup. We are not trying to match the concealer to the client's skin tone. Now I'm moving on to the next side and I'm just going to do the same thing that I did on the first brow. And just a reminder, you want to use a flat brush for this so that you have clean lines you don't want to use one of those fluffy brushes uh, sorry i don't know the name for it i'm not a makeup artist uh, but you always want to use a flat brush when you are concealing you always want to make sure that you're stretching the skin so that you get clean lines and you also want to make sure that you're only using a little bit of product if you're using too much concealer it's just going to make the brows appear messy another tip for concealing is you always want to hold your brush on an angle and work side to side, your brush should never be at 90 degrees. We are now going to move on and conceal the top of the brow. Some artists don't conceal the top. I personally like to conceal the whole thing just so that my lines are crisp and I can see where I need to go. And I hope you guys appreciate the different angle here. I was really trying to create a cinematic experience with this video. And this lovely lady with the patience of a saint was just watching me frantically move the tripod in a million different angles. So if you appreciate the different angles that you are seeing here today and all the information that we're sharing, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. If you are curious to know, the total mapping slash pre-draw portion of this procedure typically takes me about 45 minutes to an hour. That being said, if you are a beginner artist, it is most likely going to take you longer than that. It's okay, just take your time and do not rush this part of the procedure. Even now, as an experienced artist, if my pre-draw is taking me longer than an hour, I will still take my time and make sure it's as close to perfect as possible because a great pre-draw is going to give you a great end result. So as you can see, the brows are really coming together nicely and the concealer is just helping to create a really nice contrast so that the brows stand out. Now, I didn't show this part in the video, but I did have the client sit up again once I was done concealing so that she could take a final look at the shape and give me her approval before we proceeded to the next step. All right, so now the moment that we've all been waiting for, our pre-draw is done. We are ready now to go into the skin with our machine and our ink. Before going into the skin, I will always explain to the clients what the needle is going to feel like and what they can expect during the outline. This part can typically be a little nerve-wracking for the client, especially with the loud buzzing of the machine. Uh, but once they feel those first couple of strokes and they realize it's not as painful as they thought, they tend to relax for the remainder of the outline. Sorry guys, I was really trying to get a good angle of this part of the procedure. Clearly with this clip, I didn't do a good job, but in the next clip, you'll be able to see a little bit better where my machine is going. So essentially the purpose of the outline is to now transfer our pre-drawn shape to the client's skin so that we have an area to follow when we're shading it in. So you want to outline exactly where your brow pencil is meeting the concealer. At this point, the client is not numb, but it's still pretty comfortable. It's not as painful as people think because we're not going as deep. So it does not feel the same as a tattoo. I strongly believe in self-educating and nowadays, on especially on YouTube, there's nothing that you can't learn online. But with that being said, I do strongly suggest that you take an in-person course before you start working on clients. If you are in the Ontario, Canada region, I do offer in-person courses at our Shikani Inc. Academy. So if you're interested in that, you can send me a message or just comment down below. Once your outline is complete, we are now going to wipe off all the brow pencil and concealer. If you are a beginner artist, it would be a good idea to wipe in sections so that you can check if the ink actually implanted into the skin before wiping off your whole pre-draw. Now we are going to numb this eyebrow. So you're just going to go in with your primary numbing with a Q-tip and you're just going to rub it around and make sure that you're really getting numbing underneath those hairs as well. I am really generous with my numbing cream because I want my clients to be as comfortable as possible, so I suggest that you do the same. 
If your client is in pain, it's going to make your job a lot harder because they're going to be moving around and flinching and you won't be able to get the job done properly. So for the rest of the video, you're going to see the procedure from this angle just because I think it's easier to see, but I would still remain working either behind the client or on the side of the client. I went ahead and outlined the other brow off camera, but you're just gonna do the exact same thing that you did on the first brow to the second brow, and then cover the brows in plastic wrap while they're numbing. They're gonna numb for 20 to 30 minutes, and then you can proceed with the rest of the procedure. So here you can see me just wiping off one brow and getting ready to start shading. I always like to make sure that the brow is completely dry before I start shading so that the ink doesn't splash everywhere, which is why you'll see me here just dabbing off the brow with a Q-tip. All right, so here we go. We're about to begin shading. Throughout the video, you're going to see me do what is referred to as a scissor stretch, which is stretching with my pointer finger and my middle finger. You might see other artists stretch the skin differently. Some artists like to stretch horizontally right across the whole brow, but you basically just have to find what's comfortable for you and what works for you. I always like to begin shading at the tail of the brow and work my way toward the front. If you are an aspiring artist or perhaps considering getting this procedure done, you might hear the term pass. What that means is it's basically just a layer. So this here is our first pass and we're going to be completing four passes on each brow. This is why the procedure is a little bit lengthy. It's because we are going over the brows in layers and slowly building that color, unlike a tattoo where you would just go over it once and it would be finished. Working in passes or layers is definitely a bonus to the ombre powder technique because this makes it customizable for the client. If they are looking for something more natural, you can do less passes. If they want something bold, a little bit more dark, you can do more passes and create more saturation. Keep in mind that once healed, ombre powder will heal 30 to 50% lighter. So I would always do at least two passes. Otherwise, it's going to be extremely light once it's healed and your client is most likely going to be disappointed so you want to do at least three or more passes to ensure that the color will still be there once it's healed i did go ahead and speed this part up a little bit just because the shading does take a long time it takes me about 15 minutes per brow per pass the entire procedure takes me about three to four hours to complete some artists are able to complete it in two hours. I am not one of those people. I am definitely not at that speed. And I really like to just take my time and not rush anything. So I give myself at least three to four hours to complete the procedure. If you are a beginner artist or if you are having your procedure done by someone who is newer to the industry, I would expect the procedure to take a little bit more time. Three to four hours is the amount of time that it takes an experienced artist. Um, so someone who's just starting out might require a little bit more time. My first client, believe it or not, took me seven hours. I know. Oh my God. Uh, God bless my first client. And thank you for giving me a chance. I would not be here without you. And thank you for sitting through seven hours. My point in saying this is be patient with yourself. Rome wasn't built in a day. You're still learning and it's expected for it to take a little bit more time in the beginning. And eventually as you progress throughout your career, you will be able to pick up your speed and complete the procedure a lot faster. A little tip here for shading the brows is to always make sure you are really saturating. Something I see in a lot of beginner artists is they move very quickly to complete the brow and they skip a lot of areas and you'll see a lot of pockets that do not have any pigment. I know the brows are looking very dark right now but you'll see how light they actually are once I wipe. This is why you really want to saturate your layers to make sure that the skin is actually retaining the ink. You also just want to watch the pressure of your hand. You should be feeling a slight vibration. If you are feeling a really harsh vibration or your machine is producing a very loud noise, you're most likely going too deep. I would recommend practicing your pressure on a balloon or even on latex skin before getting started on an actual client. So you might notice here that I've switched my position. I like to work from this angle when I am working in this area and here you'll see I'm trying to create that light feathered ombre look where the front is going to be lighter than the rest of the brow. 
This front area is also referred to as the bulb of the brow. So when working in this area, you always want to use a lighter pressure to create that light feathered ombre look. So here you'll see I am wiping off the brow. I'm just using a baby wipe dipped in a green soap and distilled water mixture. And as you can see, as mentioned earlier, the brow actually is very light. Although it appears dark, it's actually not that saturated, which is why we need to complete more layers to build up the darkness of the brow. So now I'm going to go in with a secondary numbing. So this is the numbing that you're going to use when the skin is open. We are going to be using the snumming after every pass that we complete, which is the great thing about ombre powder because we are continuously numbing throughout the whole procedure. So again, I went ahead and did the other brow off camera. So now we've done the other brow and we are back to the first brow that we were working on and we're doing now our second layer of color. I didn't speed this part up just because I wanted those who are trying to learn to get a good look at my hand positioning, um, the way that I'm shading, and, and just in real time how long it's really taking for me to shade the brow. But if you want, feel free to skip ahead and just fast forward this part a little bit because like I said, the shading does take a little bit of time. For those of you who are deciding to stay and watch this shading section, I thought I could answer some frequently asked questions about the ombre powder procedure while we watch. So the first frequently asked question is, does the ombre brow procedure affect the way that the hair will grow? The answer to that question is no, this procedure does not affect the hair growth at all. So your hair will still grow exactly the way that it normally would. So moving forward after the procedure, if you are looking to groom the brows and clean up those hairs, I would recommend either threading, plucking, or even shaving. Um, I would try to avoid waxing because it does exfoliate the brows a lot and they just might not last you as long. But either threading, plucking, or shaving would be fine to remove any unwanted hairs. Another frequently asked question is, is this procedure okay for all skin types? The answer to that is yes, whether you have dry, oily, combination skin, you can get this procedure done. If you are someone who had oily skin, it might not last as long. Um, you might just need to come for a little bit more frequent touch-ups. However, you still could do this procedure and it will still last you a really long time. And that brings us to our next question, which is how long do the ombre brows last? The brows will typically last one to three years approximately. This number depends on your lifestyle, your skin type, um, and just the way that you are caring for the brows. Another question I get asked a lot is, will I bleed during the procedure? The answer to that is no. If the client is having a lot of bleeding or excessive bleeding during the procedure, something is wrong. Either your pressure is too deep or most likely they did not follow their pre-care instructions. We are actually not going that deep into the skin, so the client should not be bleeding. And as you can see from the video of me working above, you can see that there's only ink there, you're not getting any blood, um, and I'm not having to constantly wipe any blood that's coming out because she's not bleeding. We're at the correct pressure, and she clearly did follow her pre-care instructions. If the client was bleeding the procedure, this would lead to poor retention of the ink because essentially the blood would just be pushing out all the ink that we are trying to deposit into the skin. I always say to my clients and to my students that a huge, huge part of the procedure is how the client is caring for the brows. This means pre-care and after-care. You could go to the best artist in the world, you could pay top dollar for your procedure, but if you are not following pre-care and after-care, there's a really good chance that you are not going to have a great end result. Now, I want you to take a look at the area that I have gone over already. Take a look at how dark and saturated it is. Ideally, this is what you want for a good pass. A common mistake that I see with beginner artists is they're really scared to saturate because they don't want it to be too dark 
and they're also scared when it comes to the edges of the shape and they don't shade all the way to the outline so just make sure that you're really shading all the way to your outline um, and not leaving any space there if you are someone considering having this procedure done it's important to familiarize yourself with the aftercare and what the healing process is going to be like the brows do take about two weeks to heal during this time, they will be scabbing, so if you have an event coming up and you don't know when you should get your brows done, I would recommend at least two to three weeks before your event. Immediately after the procedure, the brows might appear very dark, but as I said earlier, they will heal about 30 to 50% lighter, and they will be much more natural once they're healed. If you have any questions regarding the procedure or regarding training, feel free to comment down below or you can send me a message directly on my Instagram page, which is at Shikeni Inc. And I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. All right, so we are almost done filling in this brow. I went ahead and sped up that middle section there. Um, and now I'm just doing these fronts or the bulbs of the brow. Again, you're going to want to make this area very light and airy. You don't want it to be too saturated because we're trying to create that light feathered ombre look. And for this area here, I always like to pull towards myself, which is why you'll see me kind of shift positions here and work from this angle. For this area here, you want your strokes to be very long and loose. You don't want them to be tight and controlled like you were previously doing for the other parts of the brow. So you're probably tired of hearing me say this by now, but you should always be stretching the brows. You'll notice that from the beginning of the procedure to the end, I am constantly stretching the skin so that I can work properly. Okay, now that this brow is nice and saturated, we are ready to go ahead and wipe again with our distilled water and green soap mixture. Just be mindful of how much pressure you're applying when you are wiping the brows. You wanna be wiping gently, because we don't want to be causing any unnecessary irritation to the brows. So now we're going to go ahead and add a little bit more numbing. Remember I said after every pass, we are going to numb the brows to make sure the client is as comfortable as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other brow off camera. So in the next clip here, you'll see that we are back to working on the first brow and we are doing now the third layer. So here we're just repeating the same thing that we did for the first two layers. We are saturating the brow and just shading inside the whole thing. And you can really see that the color is starting to come to life and it's gradually getting darker. Thanks to our secondary numbing, the client should really be feeling little to no pain. Actually, most of my clients fall asleep during the procedure, which is great because they just take a little nap and then they wake up and their brows are done and they are ready to go. I always take it as a good sign when the clients are asleep because obviously that means that they're not in pain and that they're really comfortable. Funny story, I actually had a client who fell into such a deep sleep that after the procedure, I was unable to wake her up. I was trying to like make a lot of noise and move things around so that she would wake up on her own, but I literally had to like shake her until she woke up. We are almost at the finish line. We just completed our third pass and we are applying more numbing before we go in and do the fourth pass. The brows are looking so nice. I'm so happy with how these are turning out. All right, guys, we are almost at the finish line. So again, I've gone ahead and done the other brow off camera. So we are back to this brow and we are doing our fourth and final pass. I like to refer to this fourth layer as our perfecting pass. Although we are doing the same thing we did with the other layers and saturating the whole thing, we are now really going to take the time to blend everything together nicely. And if there's any light areas, now is the time to really saturate them and make sure that the brows are perfect before we finish them off. Sometimes if I feel like the fronts are already dark enough, I'm just going to leave them alone and I'm not going to do a fourth pass in that area. So here you'll see that I'm only going to go over the tail and the middle section because I already feel like the front is saturated enough. If you are an artist, you'll notice that whenever you're working on brows that are a little bit patchy or have sparse areas, that the areas that have hair on top will always appear darker than the areas that don't. 
With this client that I'm currently working on, you may notice that the front and midsection of her brow does have a little bit more hair than the tail section that I'm currently working on. So what I'm going to do to even them out is I'm going to saturate the areas that don't have hair a little bit more so that they blend together nicely with the areas that do have hair. Another option to correct any sparseness in the brow would be to add some nano strokes or microblading strokes and create the illusion of hair in those areas. If you have made it to this point in the video, I just want to thank you for taking the time to watch and I hope that it has been educational for you. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I will be posting videos weekly and I will be covering topics such as more permanent makeup videos, business advice and marketing, how to start your business. So there's a lot of information coming your way. Stay tuned for those videos. Also, if there are any specific videos you want me to post, please comment down below. I'm always open to new ideas. All right, guys, we are almost done here. We're just finishing that fourth and final pass. I'm so excited for you guys to see the final result of these brows. If you are a beginner artist and you're feeling nervous about taking your first client, I do have some final words of wisdom here. So my first tip or piece of advice is to always work with a lighter pressure. You can always build and create more darkness once you get comfortable, but if you start off right away really dark and with too much pressure, it can be incredibly hard to fix. So always start light and gradually build your pressure. My second piece of advice is to take your time with the procedure. I know it is a lengthy appointment. I know that it does require a lot of patience, but I promise if you are taking your time and going through the steps properly, the end result is going to be that much better and quality work is going to show through in your photos and it's going to make for a really great portfolio. My third and final piece of advice is to not be so hard on yourself. I promise you will get to the level that you want to be at. Your work might not be great right away, but it takes time. Again, Rome wasn't built in a day. Everything does take time and it does require practice. So don't be discouraged if you're not getting the results that you hoped for right away. One of the main keys to success in any industry is staying consistent. You're not going to get results just by trying it once. You have to stay consistent, show up, do the work and practice in order to be good. When I first started, I was actually really, really terrible. I think I was way worse than most clients. It's just something that did not come naturally for me. So I really, really had to work in order to be good at this. So if you find yourself in the same boat where this technique is just not coming to naturally, I promise if you keep at it and you just continue to practice, you will get better. It is true when they say success tastes so much sweeter when you've worked a little bit harder for it. We are finally done shading. Yay! So now we are going to wipe for the last time and take a look at that final result. If after wiping, I still feel like there's some areas that might need more, especially those areas that don't really have hair, then I might just go over them again before completing the procedure. All right, here is the final result of our procedure. We are done and she now has her beautiful ombre brows. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to my channel.